Well, let the technical drama continue. Jeez, oh pizzas, guys. Jeez, oh pizz. Is this lit up because I got something new? What the heck? Uh, so that was a nice crash that we're going to now try to recover from. <laughs> uh, just another day of trying to be a duels player. Raw, raw, raw. So, what's up? What's up with all this? Um, so... <laughs> so, what we found out today is that a bunch of cards are getting the ban hammer. They're getting not destroyed, deleted, not uh, go away, never come back. They're getting replaced, and they're getting replaced by other cards. But they are going away. You will not be able to cast them after you update to the April version. And that includes Angelic Edict. That includes Divine Favor. I know, amazing cards. Elite Vanguard. Yep, too good. Can't have it. Um, what else is on the ban list? Or the replace list, I suppose. Uh, da -da. Yeah, Dreg Reaver. Yep, that's got to go. That's that 4-3. Uh, actually, they're just some of these are just being replaced with more uh, generic-ish cards. But uh, some of the powerful ones are being removed, and when they were discussed, it was said that, they're, that we're toning the power down. And one of those is Foundry Street Denizen. Whenever a red creature earns the battlefield, plus one, plus oh. Too good. That's going to go away. Axe Bane Stag. Another one getting the uh, big game axe. <laughs> Been harvested for meat, that one. Gate Creeper Vine. And all the gates are going away. We're getting a pretty decent replacement. Sylvan Advocate gets a basic land, just like Gate Creeper does. But uh, there are no gates in Innistrad or Zendikar. Gates are from Ravnica. And that's kind of the reason it's got to go. Jagged Scar. Goodbye. Uh, too good. Uh, they specifically said that this card makes flyers irrelevant and quickly outclasses on the ground and encourages gameplay they don't like. They actually gave thought-out sentences to why they have to remove Jagged Scar Archers from the game. Amazing. Not exactly a problem I've had. I usually don't even kill this. I usually sweep the board and this goes down with it. Um, and then, of course, uh, everybody's absolute favorite sacred panda bear that we can't... I just... There's probably going to be protests. There will probably be sobbing in the streets. There will probably be silence in the gaming centers. Um, we will all bow our head and mourn the passing of the card we love the most. Moanbuli Acid Moss. Goodbye. You are being replaced. It will be explosive vegetation, and you will no longer get to screw up mana bases and ramp us at the same time. R.I.P. Um, also, everybody's favorite anti-aggro card that can be in any frickin' deck that doesn't know what to do in the two spot. Goodbye, Perilous Mirror. You are getting the... You are out. Um, you are no longer welcome in this game. So, bon voyage. Um, like I mentioned, the gates are going to go away, but we are going to get different dual lands to replace them. No mention on the tango lands. If those are going away, I think they'll be okay. Um, but yeah, big shakeups in the starter box, big shakeups in duels. The first time ever, and I mean ever, that they are not adding cards, but removing cards from the game. And it's a big deal because it means that they care enough about the gameplay to make changes before we were just stuck with an absurdly powerful deck like Goblin Gangland or Avacyn's Glory. And, you know, you either played it or dealt with it, and a lot of times you just lost to it and there was nothing you could do. Not this time. Not this time. Now it's, uh, now they care enough to make some changes, and I think that's a great thing. And like I said in the last, uh, video before we got cut off by my attempt to um, what was happening my opponent I believe was conceding and the game crashed <laughs> but um, yeah like I was saying we want to look forward we're gonna try to find the new cards and work with the new cards and figure out the best uh, path going forward but this is uh, this is the party you know it's Friday night for Friday night magic and we're gonna say goodbye to those OP cards those ridiculous cards we're going to say goodbye to Acid Moss. We're going to say goodbye to Denison. Goodbye to the Gate Creeper Vine. Goodbye to the Perilous Mirror. And of course, goodbye to Jagged Scar Frickin' Archers. 
And uh, all this, of course, we still got time. You know, it's it's not for a little while longer. Um, my deck is like all creatures. It's really tempting to keep this. Because evolutionary leap, but if they remove the leap, it's just... Yeah, but I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I don't care. Um, but yeah, it, we've got time. They keep saying April. They don't say when in April. We'd like to think it's early April. Because... That's when uh, the set will come out. That's when shadows will drop. But it doesn't have to be early April. It could be the end of April. So we've still got some time. But uh, these cards, they are the way of the past. And we have to work out the way of the future. Now let's see how many lands we draw in a row, keeping a five lander. I, I am a lot more likely to keep five landers in while Acid Moss is in the game. And I'm going to mulligan them a lot more when Acid Moss is out of the game. But... It doesn't look like our opponent plans to moss us. It looks like they're going to play Kratz, or maybe not. Oh, there's the there's the ban hammer. It's a, there's the OP Perilous Mirror here to uh, wreck our plans. Yep. Uh, who would have thought a little dork like Perilous Mirror would cause a stir? But Oh, and the replacement for Perilous Mirror? I don't remember the name of it. Let's just call it Horrible, because it is. It is a, a two mana for a 2-1 artifact creature. The end. About as bland as you can get. I mean, if that if that doesn't scream magic starter box to you, right? Uh, there you go. But that's what we have. That's what we will replace the mighty perilous mirror with. A bland 2-1 artifact creature that I don't think will even make the cut in Thopters. Okay, you're wild sizing. Nobody cares. It's a pretty bad use of one. I mean, I I guess he must have nothing else to do. I would like to draw some non-land. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll do this. It's very... I don't think it's very likely they can just outright kill it, but we'll see. Maybe there's Reeve Soul to go with that Perilous Mirror, that Blister Pod, things of that nature. Let's see what he can do. He can Rex Sage my Evil Leap. Okay. I mean, it kind of got me what it needed to. So he's playing, like, Golgari Value, which... Perilous Mirror is a big part of that deck. That deck is going to miss Perilous Mirror. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm So what I think about the Shadows Over Innistrad, Oath of the Gatewatch starter box guys, if I am remembering them correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, they are just some vanilla dorks. Like <laughs> They mean pretty much nothing to me. Uh, I was looking at them, and I'm pretty sure that my instinct was, these are horrible. These are not impressive. These do not make me want to play Magic that much. But, uh, I mean, I don't think I'm missing anything there. I definitely didn't see anything that, like, perked my ears up. More allies means more options for allies, which is, you know, that's its own kind of exciting. But other than that, I don't know. There's nothing on par, like even close to on par with the cards that they're replacing, except exclo Explosive Vegetation is actually better for Ramp, but everything else is a power downgrade for the starter box, which means there's more pressure on the set itself to be a power upgrade, and I believe it will be. I have, I have faith in that. So let's turn things sideways. Because he'll probably take Dwinnin down, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know about that. <sighs> I am curious to see how he wants to handle this block. If he wants to deal two to Dwinnin, he can put Mirror Blister Pod in front of the two two, and he can put oh nope not doing that. Interesting. Interesting. And okay, I guess I I okay so he is going to kill Dwinnin, and then when the damage comes off, he'll also kill the Shaman, because Dwinnin will go down. Yep, there we go. And then we'll just uh, hit him with it again. <laughs> Bra. I do wonder if they're going to keep Reclamation Sage. They didn't say anything about that card. They said they're going to, re going to replace 20 cards, and I think they only showed us um, like 10. So maybe there's more to go there. Okay, so our opponent still believes in Acid Moss. Enjoy it while you can. He's got... So um, by definition, his deck is completely OP, right? Because he's got Acid Moss, and he's got... Perilous Mirror. Just all the broken cards, right? But we still haven't drawn Jagged Scar and we're tearing it up.
We're good. It's all good, guys. I'm sure he's looking for that languish, but we're not gonna play around it. We're not. We're not scared. If he had languish, he would have cast that instead of the moss. So we're just gonna try to get this game over with. That's the plan. So, now, uh, I guess he's only got one black. That could be messing up his language. But he cast the Gate Creeper Vine. I, oh, I guess that was his only black, was what he fetched with the Vine. Well, let's see what he's got. Wild Size is an interesting card in this value deck. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what do you guys think? Should we send this uh, player a message saying that his deck is illegal and that he's going to get ban hammered? <laughs> Tell him that Moss and Mirror are like cheating. <laughs> I guess we could mess with him that way. Hey! Lord Savior of my the masses. I'm pretty sure that nope, this wasn't quite lethal. One, two, three, four, five. But it is now. <laughs> fog? Fog meta, fog meta, fog meta. Oh, nope. He's out. What's going on? What is going on in this world? Where's the fogs? Where have they gone? People have figured out that Moss and Perilous Mirror are broken, I guess, and they took the fogs out of their decks. All right, all right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Jagged Scar, this is supposed to be Jagged Scar's party and he hasn't shown up yet. He's uh, making a late entrance, he's the guest of honor because he's getting kicked out of the game. He's getting expunged from the record. It's gonna be like he was never here. He's, he's that guy in the small town, you know, he's, he's a big basketball star, but now he's going to go off to college, and we're all going to talk about how it used to be one of our cards, but he's going to go off into the great unknown and never come back. Jagged Scar is like the super tall dude on the basketball team, and he's, gonna, he's going on to bigger and better things, and he's going to leave us in our little duels community behind, and we're going to talk about him in the past tense like he's dead. <laughs> but... Ah, he's and and this is going away party he hasn't shown up yet he has not shown up up next if you don't know what I'm talking about Haunted Flower Duels Diaries or check out the article on magicthegathering.com um, I think it's magicthegathering.com slash articles slash home and you'll see it up there Jagged Scar Archers it's leaving the game along with Perilous Mirror Foundry Street Denizen Gate Creeper Vine uh, Acid Moss, oh yeah, that's your headliner. Perilous Mirror, and a bunch of others. They are go not going to be in the game once you update to the April Shadows Over Innistrad change-up. And I think that's great. Uh, I said a while ago, I, I, I wish that we had tournaments where we banned the starter box because I didn't like the kind of those cards that were just sort of handed to us. I thought that they... We're a little odd in the format because I wanted the format to look more like standard, which it's getting there. And then they turn around and like replace a bunch of cards in that set with standard cards. So feel like a genius. Not gonna lie, feel like I called it. And uh, you know, plenty of people didn't get my point. And it, like I was saying, I wasn't really trying to make it a point. It was just an opinion. It's just really funny that it came out that way and that it went through and that's what happened. Bunch of cards from the starter box are all shaken up. It's not like they banned the whole starter box like I discussed, but they are changing it to a to a pretty uh, big extent. Um, they're adding in Shrouding Mist, which for one white is plus one plus one and prevent all damage dealt to the creature. Instant. Um, that's really a big deal, because right now you can't do anything with an open planes. If you have one white open, we all know you've got nothing. We all know that there is nothing you can do uh, to save your creature or prevent an attack or anything like that. And now one wide open actually does something significant. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's well overdue. I think that card will get played in, you know, maybe like red-white prowess, red-white aggro, obviously. It'll be fun. So let's get uh, let's get on the board. Let's draw some cards with our visionary. Get closer to our jagged scar archers who still haven't shown up to their own going away party. Uh, I'll do what I have to. I will dig them up with this evolutionary leap. So it looks like we might be partying with Gruel Ramp. If they're running acid moss, their days are numbered. Then they'll have explosive vegetation, which in my opinion is better. But so hardly uh, something to get uh, geeked up about. But you know. Ah, uh, that's the way it goes. Draw that card. 
Boom. Oh, yeah, buddy. He's here. He's here, guys. We can start the party now. All right, get in there. It's tempting to might of the masses this block, but I'm not taking a risk uh, against a fiery impulse. I'm really not. I don't want to blow it, because might of the masses might be our big win con if he doesn't have a sweeper. Uh, you got to wonder what red cards they have up their sleeve if they have to kick Fire Foundry Street Denizen out of the game. Like, I mean, there must be more cards like Goblin Fodder that make it good, but... I can only wonder, because it's not like Foundry Street Denizen is that, you know, is anything to get hyped about. It's it's not that, it's not a very hot card, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's up with that. He's gonna go block block. I'm gonna go don't care, don't care. Oh yeah, he's not risking the offshoot, now he's fearing the wild size. Yep, 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 yep. H Spectre 68 means, uh, it's stands for Hypnotic Spectre, I'm sure, which is a bit of an old school card. It was reprinted a few times, but I would call it an old school card, so we might have a Magic Pro on our hands. And here's that Acid Moss, maybe? Can we get... Can I get a Moss Moss? Can I get a Moss Moss? Bring that on. Come on now. You know you want to. You know you want to. It's probably thinking about what to hit. Oh, it's not. It's a From Beyond. A little risky against Elves, because you think Reclamation Sage is in the deck. But Reclamation Sage is not in my deck. Alright. Groovy, 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 groovy. Um, so, let's get that out there and get to work. If So, we can assume that there isn't, like, a Radiant Flames in our future. That's a good... That's the good news. How are you going to play it, my friend? How are you going to play it? Yep, block that, block that. Yep. Still going to hang on to this. Still going to hang on to this. If he's going to, like, Radiant Flames for three or something, or even for two, like, we can save two creatures right now with Might of the Masses. And we'll hold that up and see what he wants to moss. If he wants to moss. From Beyond gets to work. Going to put chump blockers on the battlefield. We don't like that, but we're going to be going really wide. Act of Treason. Okay. What's he got? Like, Fiery Conclusion? Is he going to run Act of Treason Fiery Conclusion on me? Maybe he thought that that would get the full buff. I don't know. Act of Treason Fiery Conclusion is definitely a possibility. Yep, there it is. So, he hits us with his big combo. We save our guy, because we can. And he got rid of Jagged Scar at his own party. That's rude. That's rude. Let's go ahead and get the white. Why not? <sighs> In so, our planes are moss-proof. So, you... Um, yeah. If he wants to block something and trade with the Scion, that's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Just picking away and hoping that his, whatever his big end game is, isn't too devastating. Of course it's ramp, so of course it is. We do need to keep the pressure up, but we have the means. Running, f He's running uh, Fiery Conclusion and Foundry Street Denizen. That's, that's, that's int, or not Foundry Street Denizen. He's running Fiery Conclusion Act of Treason in his Gruel Ramp deck. That's a little funky. That's a little funky. Now Touch of the Void, okay. Let's hope we can get lucky and hit another. We've got all four in the deck, so I'm sure we'll find something. Oh yeah, Jagged Scar Archer's returning to the scene of his party. Love it. What else you got? What else you got? He's gonna pass, maybe? Do do do. Yep. Get me something else. 
Okay, cool. We'll just keep cycling our dorks. And, uh, it'd be nice to draw out lands, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Turn them sideways. We're gonna do the Elf Evil Leap game. Now you can come out. You can come out. You can go get another green. But we'll wait and see. Well, nah. Eh. I do what I want when I want to. <laughs> apparently I broke it. Never mind, apparently I don't do what I want when I want to. Uh, he hasn't played anything big and scary. It's about time. Uh, this is Renewal. That sets him up, right? He's going to have a lot of life, and he's going to be able to Ulamog us pretty soon. So obviously we play Nyssa and then don't flip her so that we can get our attack on and get an extra point of damage. And then we'll flip her after combat. Boom, boom. I don't... I can't... I think we need to just draw more cards because I know. I know we're going to get Ulamogged. So before that happens, we need some Shaman of the Packs. We need ways to like really keep the pressure up. Eh, that's one way. Just keep visionarying. Visioning. Keep keeping to our vision quests. I guess we'll do it like that. If we get a Shaman, we can play it next turn and hope he doesn't sweep the board. He hasn't had the means yet. <sighs> okay, that's fine. So I'm going to do a little more digging. Okay, cool. Hopefully we'll get to play that next turn. If he doesn't have something big to do, try to throw Jagged Scarp, the uh, going away party he deserves. Plenty of action in the yard, plenty of lands on the field to make Vine Breeder something instead of a nada. Although, of course, we're going to be tapping out a lot to keep up with this kind of shenaniganry that our opponent has uh, opted for. Yep, yep, yep. I get it. I get it. <laughs> cool. Pilgrimage. Nice. So he's at the point where I believe he can just uh, combo me out with Ulamog. Yippity skippity. Oh, not what I wanted. I'm just not getting my way. Oh well. He's still gonna have to get through us. And there's another shaman. So that's a lot of shamaning. <sighs> Let's fire up. <sighs> Down to seven. If I attack with these, he can block all of them. We can get him to six, but let's just try to play for the um, Might of the Masses. Might of the Masses or another Shaman for the win. That's his Nissa. He's, he's got it going on, I gotta say. Got it going on in the fat stack. But, I mean, this matchup is really bad for elves. Like, uh, in my experience, about 2080 for a ramp over elves, which is why elves just, you don't see it too often anymore. If you do see it, it's very, uh, you know, it's kind of a new player unlocking cards. Or at least it feels like that. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who still get their elves on every now and then, Fiery Impulse. 
That's handy. I mean, I can knock down one elf. An elf. But next turn's going to be all about trying to dig up that last shaman of the pack, I think. Wants to attack me. I won't attack. Well, I guess it's one way that you can do it. Try to put pressure on. So he's going to do a block, block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is one. So we'll defend. And we'll sack. And we'll hit a Dwinnin's Elite so that our Shaman stays lethal if we can find it. But there's only one more. Doesn't seem too likely. We also kept just enough creatures that if we draw Might of the Masses, we're good. That's not Might of the Masses. So it's digging time. All right, let's see. You know how we do, we just draw the nuts. We just get the card we need, right? So let's see if we can do that again here. That's not the card we need, right? That doesn't do it, right? One, two, three, four, five, block, 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 take. Yeah, that doesn't do it. I mean, it's great and all, but it doesn't do it. Doesn't do it. Although getting really wide can keep us alive. What? Ulamog? No kidding, right? <sighs> of course. We all know. We all know what you're up to. We all know your shenanigans. Now, he's, I think he should have Fiery Impulse the Hunt Master, right? I, I mean, maybe he doesn't have Spell Mastery. Ah. Taking down Ramp with Elves. It's like chopping down the largest tree in a forest with a herring. So he had Spell Mastery. I don't know why he didn't just shoot the Hunt Master. Maybe he's holding out for better. I don't know. Dun 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 Joke's on you, homie. I got another. <laughs> There's the impulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right now he can block everything. If he attacks with something, though, um then Might of the Masses is still a live draw. Oh, no, there's another blocker. So we need him to attack with two somethings. Please attack me with two somethings. Now that he's tapped a bunch of stuff, we know he's not gonna Rolling Thunder. Although we should have been able to deduce that. Nope, he doesn't attack. Alrighty. Hit me. Eh. Let's get to work. What do you guys think? Can we do it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, we're going to need another elf in play anyway. Ah, let's let's try to hit. That's not it. Let's take another gander. I think we still got enough mana. 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 Oh, come on now, come on. One time. Nope. <laughs> uh, getting embarrassing. Um, so now we're just out of the mana to do this stuff. Uh, so we gotta do something like this and pass the turn, and I'm pretty sure we're dead. Yeah, you see why um, Jagged Scar is just broken right here. He's just sitting over here doing nothing. He didn't even get targeted by Ulamog. Mm. 
That was funny. It didn't show me the revealed card. Oh well. Wasn't that forest. I know that. <laughs> so what's it gonna be? Really, dude? That's all that you can do? So... Um... No, I'll take it. Screw it. <laughs> Not even gonna... Ah! Come on, man. I'm trying to see my own exile pile. I wanna know if I have outs. Did you get it? <laughs> He's still going off over here. I think I see my shaman over there, so that'll do that. That's it. That's it. Oh! He took out Jagged Scar at his own party. It's not fair. Well, he's just doing the rubbins, so let's get out. Ugh. Stupid elves. <laughs> and that's why Jagged Scar needs to be banned, because obviously drawing two of them there was just so powerful that our opponent couldn't handle it. <laughs> and yet we're getting explosive vegetation to make sure that that Ulamog and that Omnath get cast more easily. Hallelujah! That's wizards. That's wizards. I think that they, I mean, they're replacing uh, Asimoth with explosive vegetation. I think that's hilarious because explosive vegetation is a superior card in many ways. Um, <laughs> and they say it's so that uh, ramp decks can still experience the weaknesses of ramp decks, which is a lack of interaction. Sure. <laughs> sure. A lack of interaction. So so weak, these ramp decks. Ah. So elves are going to get worse. It's going to be sad. But it can still do a lot of the same stuff. It's just right now it's not even close to good enough. Not even close. Grave King Bishop. So we're going to get in there with another broken card if it shows up, and that's Foundry Street Denizen. Would be he'd be awesome in this hand because of his buddy Dragon Fodder, the big one two combo. Three damage on turn two, broken. Uh, Foundry Street Denizen is getting replaced by a card called Goblin Balloon Brigade, which is a one one goblin, and for a red mana it can gain flying, and that's the whole text. Now, Goblin Balloon Brigade has a history. It was in the very first, and I do mean the very first. Um, set uh, the very first Sly deck. It was in the very first Paul Sly mono red deck that did well at a Pro Tour qualifier back in 1996. Now, obviously, magic and cards have changed a lot since 1996. Uh, some of the other cards in that deck were downright embarrassing. Some Iron Claw Orcs, for example, uh, some Orcish Librarians. Uh, there were some Dwarven Blast Miners, I, or some kind of a dwarf was in there, and it was just like a 1-1 Mountain Walk for one, something like that. Um, but Goblin Balloon Brigade was there. It was it was one of the original beat-you-down red cards, and it's back to do a bit more. Now, will it actually make the cut in Mono Red decks? It better not, because they said they removed Foundry Street, because they expect red de decks to get even better at rotation. And, uh, well, <laughs> hmm, yeah, you. They expect red decks to get even better at rotation. That, mu that must mean there's some sick red cards coming our way. They, they must be pretty sick. So if Goblin Balloon Brigade, a 1-1 one, one for 1, is making the cut after we get these supposedly sick red cards, it will be very ridiculous. I wonder if we can build a Madness deck out of just red cards. Um... There's a red card right now that is a 1-3, and you discard a, gar a card to give it a plus 2, plus minus 2 until end of turn, so it becomes a 3-1, and it's one red and one other, so it's well-costed. It can attack for 3, for 2 mana, which is pretty good. Oh, that, that sucks. <laughs> that, <laughs> good game. Um, but uh, So that's going to be interesting, to see if that card shows up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do I save this to blow up a block? I don't think so. I think I just fire it off. 
play the land to make him think about a titan strength. Turn these critters sideways. Let's see what he wants to do. He wants to take it. Okay. Must have Thopter Spy Network. <sighs> Which it will be just great. Uh, red, Thopters, not friends. Thopters is... Oh, <laughs> that's great too. That's that's fantastic. Double Whirl of Rogue on the play. Cha-ching. Gonna have to find a way to overcome. And he's not even gonna attack. Got him, got him on the run. And when we get him on the run, boys, we're gonna keep him on the run. And we're gonna go, go, go. And we're not gonna stop till we get across that goal line. Pretty sure I have 18 lands in here. Pretty sure I'm flooding out. Hala frickin' Luya. <laughs> Getting Thopter wrecked. I'm sure he'll get his block on now. He doesn't believe the Titan strength anymore. He thinks it's a myth. Okay. Well, let's see if he's got Ro Whirl of Rogue number three, shall we? Let's check out Whirl of Rogue number three. Because that's how it works. That's how it works. Maybe a Guardian of Tazim or something equally. Oh, great. Chief of the Foundry. Kerching. Kerching indeed. Um. Yeah, well, light you up. Get out of my yard. Oh, please try to counter it. Oh, disperse. Sure. Yeah, disperse works. So that means he's not going to want to trade, which means he's going to take four, which is fantastic. So that, uh, let's see. Why would I play the dragon fodder in the second main? Probably so that I didn't know that I had more tokens coming. I didn't have anything that benefited from casting it in the first main. So may as well not let him know that there's going to be more tokens coming at him. That's just, that's just good magic right there. Information is power. Okay, he's going to go with the mirror and he's going to hold back the chief. He doesn't want it to get blown up. And he's at seven. So while he can't disperse, we're going to get in there with that. Now, do we want to send the whole team? He can go block, 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 and then he doesn't kill one of them. So yeah, we can send the whole team. We'd, he doesn't want to trade them right now anyway, because he has that chief of the foundry. Oh, he does want to trade right now. Interesting. Sure. Takes a lot of damage this way. I love it. Love it. So we got him down to three. That'll get him down to two. Now we just need a twin bolt. Now we just need something of relevance off the top. Blue doesn't keep a lot of life gain up its sleeve, unless he's got like bottle gnomes, which wouldn't be unreasonable in this deck. Here's the Thopter Spy. So, time's on our side. Just gotta get the right draw now. We can get him down to two with this attack, down to one if he can't do anything about the arsonist. Alright, I think that's good enough. Yep. Right off the top, buddy. Boom. Mm. Ha, I don't have a Foundry Street Denizen. That card would be too powerful. That's why they're taking it out of the game, didn't you hear? They're taking away our Foundry Street Denizen because it's too good and giving us Goblin Balloon Brigade. And of course, like I'm trying to play these decks as like going away parties to those decks, uh, those cards that are too powerful, but we aren't drawing them. <laughs> All right, so interesting. Our opponent, mono blue artifacts. I've, I've played some decks similar to that, but uh, so oh, why didn't why didn't he keep the? He could have lived another turn. Huh. Huh. That's weird. I wonder why they would. Uh, wonder why he'd do that. No reason to discard the Marauders. You could live. You could have lived. The, the fairies. Why'd you discard the fairies? You could have blocked. You could have survived one more turn. Who knows? Who knows what the world will happen. They are removing cards from the pool, dude! This is the breaking news! Absalyn. They are removing cards from the, the from the pool. This is on the mothership, magicthegathering.com. There's an article for duels, which that is cool all on its own. 
All right, and they are at, uh, there is also an article that I put up on my blog that you can go check out. They are pulling cards out of the game. Say goodbye to... Uh, we were saying goodbye to Jagged Scar Archers, <laughs> Foundry Street Denizen, Perilous Mirror, Acid Moss, everyone's favorite, and Gate Creeper Vine. Those are the, in my opinion, the big five. Now, there are other cards. Um, Elite Vanguard, that may be important to you. Uh, Angelic Edict. Just depends what you're into, I guess. I'm not really into those cards. I don't think I have white cards in anything. Uh, I don't know why everybody thinks Axe Bane Stag is a story. I think it's the uh, sarcastic... Oh. <laughs> but I mean, just just when you could have ramped into Axe Bane Stag on turn 5, because they're replacing it with Explosive Vegetation, just when you could have had turn 5 Axe Bane Stag, they're taking it away from us. Just when that was a thing. Angelic Edict is... I, uh, um... Somebody wants to say that I did a good makeover on my Twitch profile. Thank you. Um, yeah, if if you're seeing my Twitch profile with some, I think there's a picture of my dog and my cat and stuff like that. <laughs> a link to my blog, which you should go to if you want to read about the cards that are getting removed. And they're not just removing cards. This isn't like banning cards where they just say that card's gone forever. They're giving us replacement cards and. They are just going to put the replacement cards into our deck so that the experience is painless. I can't imagine the first person who has a deck with Perilous Mirror who draws whatever that weird cat thing is. It's just, it's a generic 2-1 artifact creature. That's, that's the story. It is a 2-1 artifact creature. That is all the text. That is the card. That is what they are replacing Perilous Mirror with. Not even close to the same thing. Not even close to useful. Ah. Ridiculous. I can't I can't imagine how someone's gonna feel when they look down at that and say, Where'd my perilous mirror go? This is horrible! This card is a disgrace. <laughs> I didn't even put this in my deck. <laughs> the ghost in the machine is so that's the way it's gonna be. It's what's gonna happen is when we download the update in April, when we uh, take that out, when we get the new update the uh, Tooth Fairy of Magic Duels is going to go into our decks on Wizards' behalf. It's going to remove all the cards that they decided they don't want in the starter set anymore. And it's going to replace them with cards that are, I guess, newbie approved. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> but, yep, it's there you go. <laughs> Enshrouding Mist, uh, yeah, Enshrouding Mist, though, is good because it's a cheap combat trick, and the game really needs those. I hate that Wild Size is that good, uh, that people actually use it. Uh, Enshrouding Mist is replacing Angelic Edict in a roundabout way, although technically in the starter box... Angelic Edict is being replaced re, replaced by Suppression Bonds, and in Origin, Suppression Bonds is being replaced by Enshrouding Mists. <laughs> Funky. Um, I mean, look, uh, guys, Angelic Edict's not a good card. It's it's a helpful hits everything removal spell, but it's a five mana sorcery. It's not versatile. It's not that good of a card, and there will be better cards. Don't worry. Um, on my blog, I wrote about Oblivion sp Strike that has one black and three for a sorcery that re exiles target creature. Uh, that's a common. You can have four Oblivion Strikes. So for a mana less, you can exile Ulamog and everything else that you want to exile. Except you can do it with black, which is how you should be doing... You should be killing things with black. It makes sense. So don't worry. Don't worry about Angelic Edict. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. We've got other ways to kill enchantments. we got our Felidar cover. And we got our solemn offering if you want to go there. But Angelic Edict is not going to be needed. Oblivion Strike's going to hold it down. It's going to be great. I personally am a huge fan of this change. I have never been a fan of Angelic Edict because paying five mana to remove anything feels ridiculous to me. Um, so this deck is has Perilous Mirror and Gatecreeper Vine. And we're going to be taking those out 
uh, along with the gates. That's going to be kind of sad. They keep this kind of uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. The page says suppression bonds is in and angelic edicts is out. Bonds is already in the pool. That's right. Uh, the weird thing is bonds is something that you had to unlock through Origins Boosters. Now suppression bonds is going to be a card that you unlock through... Um, you get it in the starter box. So you don't have to unlock suppression bonds anymore. It will already be in the starter box. In its place in the boosters, in Origins Boosters, you can open Enshrouding Mist. The card is Enshrouding Mist, okay? Does that, is that helping out? Uh, and Oblivion Strike has been confirmed by Wizards Chris. Now that could mean that we're not actually going to get it in the long run because they've kind of given us fool's gold on that before. But I would say at this point it is very likely that Oblivion Strike is in. All right? So hopefully that also calms some fears about getting to exile things. I also hope that... Honestly, guys, I hope that Exiling Ulamog is never necessary again because I hope we get the cards that are quality enough that we can kill the opponent before they cast 10 drops. That's, that's the way Magic usually does it. Like, a lot of standard decks don't care about if they have an answer for Ulamog. If they play Ramp, their plan is to kill them before they cast it. And that should be the plan in duels. We just... It's a slow format. We don't have a lot of options, so it's not really... It's not really up our alley. But that's... I think that will change. I can't wait for it to change. That's the plan. We're just going to kill him before Uzalek. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be saying that a lot too. Uzalek, because uh, I'm sure Kozalek is going to join him on uh, Team Eldrazi. Yep, 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 yep. <sighs> it's exciting, you guys. We're going to get new cards. New cards are the the backbone of magic and we have not received nearly enough new cards in duels the delays um all the things that have gone wrong with this kind of new version of duels that we've all been kind of in the bait it's like we're doing one big beta of this because in the long run i'm sure it will be great but we haven't had enough we have not had enough uh we have just not had enough new cards, and that is going to change, and that is great news. Infamous Gemini. I am not necessarily an organizer of the Hakuma, Hakumate. I am a, kind of an assistant on it, but I am not in charge. So I don't have the answer uh, for you on that today. I have nothing official that I can share on the next Hakumate. Ah... <sighs> So we've got a, what do we got going on over here? What Our opponent is retreat to Kazan doing up his whatever the heck lizard beast that thing is. And he is using fog to defend it. Well, I got news for him. He's going down for real. He's about to get lit up. <clears throat> All right. We're going to nuke the site from orbit. And I'm never going to stop that aliens reference, because for some reason that's exactly what Chandra's ignition makes me think of. Smothering that A-bomb. Sacking that Vigi. We'll see if he has another fog up his hand uh, to make our life a sad panda. So we'll go like this. Go like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can go like this. And this gate creeper vine, he's on his way out. They're not going to let us do broken stuff like gate creeper vine anymore. Bear with me. It's trigger time. And you know how it is with your husk. You don't want to sacrifice husk to itself. That is a thing that can happen for sure. <laughs> Yep. 
If he has the fog, I do not cares. This is too much fun, and we're gonna have a whole new grip of cards anyway. <laughs> He's pausing me. You got, is he just gonna play the fog now? I don't care. I don't care. <sighs> Boom! <laughs> Love it. Fog? You gonna fog me? You gonna fog me, bro? So I can discard all these lands? Don't matter. I still got full grip. <laughs> He's pausing me. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like this husk. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fun thing with a deck like this. You can completely flood out and still win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I've got eight in play. Full 16 lands drawn. Live in large. Only one in the graveyard. I guess it's not It's not ridiculous. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, opponent on, the t on that tilt mode. Good night, pro Tulsa. Good night. Woo! All right, so uh, we threw our party for Gate Creeper Vine. We threw our party for Jagged Scar. We threw our party for Foundry Seat Denizen. Uh, I'm going to run upstairs for a minute, but when I return, the party for Acid Moss and Perilous Mirror. Don't go nowhere. You know what else I wonder, you guys? Do you think they will ever change the music to duels? Do you, or are we gonna hear the same music for this game forever? What do you think? I mean, I'm sure it's not very high on their list, whatever it is. <laughs> However important it may or may not be to them, right? But I just wonder, will they ever say, you know what, we've heard the same song for like four years. <laughs> Maybe they'll change it up comes to mind because what I'm putting on for my background music is I'm putting on uh, the Duels of the Planeswalkers soundtrack from the old games. Um, I've got the, I've got soundtracks from like 2012, 2013, 2014. So we'll see. I mean, I keep the music turned off most of the time too. I only have it on because I notice it's like obscenely quiet on my stream. If I don't have it on, I keep my TV muted, so I don't actually listen to the duels music you guys are hearing. Now, if they update the Twitch app on Xbox like they should, so that whatever music I play through my Xbox you guys can hear, I can't wait to do that. But that's not something I can currently do. But yeah, I'm I'm always listening to some kind of tunes instead. I don't listen to the duels music. I just get I'm just curious. Will they ever actually alter that? Because they haven't touched it yet, and they haven't mentioned changing it. But I think they'll definitely change the home screen. I think they'll definitely change some of the menus. I think they're going to change some of the gameplay. It's going to be weird. Can't wait to see what they do. But yep. Today is the goodbye party for Acid Moss, so let's get one of those, like, four Acid Moss hands and try it out. <laughs> Let's let's see what we can do with Acid Moss. I know, everybody's favorite card. Everybody's going to miss it. It's going to be a dirty word, I tell you, for like quite a while. But there will be something else to complain about. Now everybody's going to be mad at like uh, an incorrigible youth's draw where it's like 4-3 haste on turn 3. Now it's going to be about getting reality smashed on turn 4. Drama like that. But God, is it going to be fun to figure out. It is going to be fun to explore. I cannot wait. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I, and But they haven't said, this is important guys, they haven't said when in April the set comes out. They haven't said when the expansion comes out. Now last time that happened, in July, when this game first came out, they put it out on iOS the very first week of July, but they didn't release it on Steam and Xbox until the last day of the month. And when they did, it was a piece of junk. It was bugged out of its mind. Ugh. This is their chance, you know, they have to make it right. They have. This is their chance to make it up to all of us who have stuck through all the BS in this game. We deserve it. <laughs> now, um, so do they cut the cards when they release the expansion or before? It will be at the same time. So the day that you download your update for the Xbox or for the iOS or Steam, those cards will be replaced. If you had uh, Acid Moss in your deck, the Acid Moss will be taken out of your deck automatically and replaced with Explosive Vegetation. That will be the day that you decide to update your duels. Hope that helps. Alrighty, come on, buddy. Come and get your moss. Come and get your moss. Come and get your moss now. Alright, Guild Gates. Well, hey, it's going to be hard to straight up color screw him if he's black white. Alrighty, alrighty. Red Rover, Red Rover, let Acid Moss come over. Oh, it is early to have my going away party. It is absolutely early for me to throw the Acid Moss party. But I am a person who looks forward. I do not try to look back. My concern already is in having the best decks and the best builds in the next edition of duels. I no longer care if I have the best versions from this duels. I, I honestly believe there's not a lot left to learn. We've been playing this game since December. I've probably put in more hours than anyone but Gemini. <laughs> and I believe that there is nothing else I can learn about another deck that is better than what we've already learned, okay? So... I am having a party to say goodbye to these so I can kick them out of my decks because I know they're not going to be used a month from now. And then I'm going to start working on replacing them with other cards and learning more about those cards instead, you know? So that's the plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to the future. I'm going to learn about what I should be replacing them with. Even though I don't have those yet. <laughs> uh, we'll get the swamp just in case we need it. Probably won't. <laughs> um, replacing the mirror will be hard because the other card that I... Like in Junkrat's, replacing Perilous Mirror will be hard. Because my first instinct is to use Gate Creeper Vine, but that's going to leave as well. Uh, we get a replacement called Sylvan Ranger. That will probably make the cut. Uh, Sylvan uh, Ranger is a 1-1 one, one elf for a green and another, and when it comes into play, you search your library for a basic land card. Put it into your hand. So, I mean, that's about the same. Now, uh, we've got, you know, points like, I'm not going to play against the same meta when the expansion is released. No kidding, but that doesn't mean I can't... That doesn't mean I can't start preparing. That doesn't mean I can't work uh, uh, with some cards that don't make the cut otherwise. And I can also do other things, you know. Um, before this game came out, I built, uh, when the Battle for Zendikar update was delayed for Xbox and iOS, I built all the Battle for Zendikar decks with my Paper Magic cards. And I, I play-tested with Paper cards, so that when the, as soon as the update came out, I was kind of ahead of the curve a bit, and I came out swinging. My red-green uh, ramp deck has changed very little from that deck that I tuned with paper cards well before uh, Battle for Zendikar even came out. So I can start preparing now. We have some confirmed cards. I can start trying them out with some different things. Obviously, what I'm like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a comparison to pro to testing for pro tours. All right, and this is a reaching comparison because this is, I am well aware that we are, this is not a pro type format. You know, this is not the pro tour. This is duels, duels is fun. 
Duels is completely different. So I'm not saying that you should treat Duels like it's the Pro Tour. But when I wanted to test for an upcoming event like a Pro Tour, or even a major Grand Prix, then what I would do is I would, every time a card was spoiled or we found out about a new card, I would start playing with it right away. Even when I didn't know what the rest of the set was going to look like. Even when I had no idea what else was in the set. Because that knowledge still comes in handy when new cards come out. It's a lot like um, in Duels 2014. If you were grinding and unlocking cards, you could pay to unlock all of them. But if you unlock them one at a time and tested each card, you were more aware of how useful those cards would be those cards that you are unlocking. So if I'm going to build decks right now using the confirmed oath cards like Reality Smasher, then I'll already know what colors and what combinations that goes well with. Uh, and it's very unlikely that a lot of the cards that are spoiled from uh, Shadows or Oath that end up in the game will change how good Reality Smasher is. And I'll already have a good idea of what to do with it and when to play it and how to play it. And I know that sounds like really try-hardy for this format, but this is the kind of thing that I really love doing. So I have no regrets about, uh, about doing that kind of thing. It's fun for me. And that's why I also write the blog, because it's so much fun for me. Uh, and I can share it with you guys, those of you who want to be a little ahead of the curve when new cards come out. So that's the plan anyway. So this game is... <laughs> my opponent is a deliberate dude over here. <sighs> Gemini's dropping some uh, misleading information. Uh, there are cards being replaced in the game, which means they're basically being deleted, but it's only from the starter deck, and it's only a handful of cards. It's not any cards from Battle for Zendikar or Origins. It's Perilous Mirror, it's Jagged Scar Archers, it's Gate Creeper Vine, it's Acid Moss, um, it's Foundry Street Denizen. Those cards are getting removed. Make no mistake. <laughs> Those cards will not be in your those cards will not be in your deck uh, the day after you update or, or after you complete the April update. Those cards will no longer be available to you. Um, so if I put out Nissa, he can attack it here. Um, but I still want to hit my land drop. Uh, I guess I can Rolling Thunder for three. Yeah, I think I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. I guess that's fine. It's not fantastic, but it's fine. I could also play the Incarnate, but it can't block the... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It absolutely does not suck that they're changing some cards. Um, for anybody who doesn't play Magic in other formats like Paper and stuff, this happens. It's called rotation. Uh, cards go out of the format when, and new cards go back in. And they're only removing cards that are a bit too boring, uh, <laughs> quite honestly. Perilous Mirror, Acid Moss. Uh, on, when, you can say that it sucks that they would delete cards, but these are cards that I think most people will be happy that are deleted. Um, Jagged Scar Archers, eh, I don't love the card. I won't miss it. Same thing with... Um, nope, not what I meant to do. Come on. One, two, three. Two, three. Uh, what the heck? It keeps on lagging out when I'm trying to pick targets. Okay, let's be deliberate. Because uh, this game is quickly falling apart in my hands as I play. All right, die. <laughs> Is my opponent conceding? That would be appreciated. <laughs> Cuz they are uh they are deliberate over there with their 100 card black white junk stack. <laughs> um but yep. Uh you're going to lose angelic edict gonna lose Elite Vanguard, but you're getting replaced with an exact same version of it. And there's absolutely nothing sad about this. You'll have replacement cards. They're gonna take they're gonna take a card like Jagged Scar Archers out of your deck, and then they're gonna replace it with a new card, uh, like Lifespring Druid, which is about the same casting cost. Uh, it doesn't do nearly the same thing, but it's a fun card, and you'll get to play with new cards. So it's something to be happy about. New cards are awesome. 
New cards mean that you get to try different things and do different strategies. New cards are what makes magic awesome. And we haven't had nearly enough new cards in this game since it's been launched. So, should just be happy. Be happy about rotations. Rotations are amazing. I'm about, like, standard uh, in April is going, I play standard, and it's going to lose um, Kanza Tarkir and Fate Reforged. Two huge sets. Sets I spent thousands of dollars collecting the cards from. And those cards won't be useful in standard anymore. And that's normal. And I welcome the change. <laughs> I'm not even going to be very sad about it. I'm really happy that the fetch lands are going to go because that's going to change the way standard is. And changing the way standard is is absolutely necessary because uh, I am sick of spending about, you know, 40% of my time at a tournament shuffling and about 2% of my time at a tournament thinking. <laughs> it seems like I have to play so freaking fast that I can't even think out my lines very well if I don't want draws in standard tournaments. It's another reason I didn't even go to F&M tonight, because I'm just waiting for rotation. I just want the cards to change, and then I'll go play, like, red-green ramp as soon as there's some change, because I'm sure ramp is going to be amazing in standard after rotation. And I think ramp will still be amazing in duels. I think explosive vegetation, which is going to replace your acid moss, is going to be a great card. Um and absolutely nothing to sneeze at, for sure. It's going to be a very solid card. All right, cool. We hit it. Um, let's make sure I do this right. Clear that out of the way. Oh, leveled. Leveled by the tandem. Leveled by the tandem tactics, you guys. All right. <laughs> you can read about the card replacements on my blog. There should be a link there uh, if you are looking at my uh, channel on a PC. Haunted Flower Duels Diaries. You can also read about it on the mothership, magicthegathering.com slash articles. Those are places where you can read about the card replacements. You can also find links about it on No Goblins Allowed or... Magic Duels Reddit, if those are places you like to go to. So, plenty of options if you want to read more about card replacements. Here at the Goodbye Party for Acid Moss, we already threw our Goodbye Party for Foundry Street, Gate Creeper Vine. We already threw our Goodbye Party for Jagged Scar Archers. This is the Acid Moss Going Away Party. We've got one more Goodbye Party for Perilous Mirror, and then those cards are getting kicked out of the decks. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, legend with a good point that in a parallel universe we'd all be like talking about how moss was a horrible card that nobody cared about and never saw play <laughs> yep acid moss kind of changed it it in in its own way it changed the world of duels because it is the ultimate in a card that just nobody really cared about um, nobody cared very much about Acid Moss uh, in Standard, in Magic lore in general. It, it, it doesn't hold like a hallowed place in Magic history anywhere except for in Duels. It is a card that just busted open in Duels and made ev a lot of people unhappy and miserable. And now it's going away. I don't know where a Gemini hears all the words I say and takes away from it. No more Thopters, question mark. Yes, there will be lots of Thopters, but we are going to run Thopters. Thopters is going to throw the going away party for Perilous Mirror, since that Perilous Mirror is a card that is always in Thopter decks. Like, every Thopter deck has Perilous Mirror. So, Perilous Mirror's going away party is going to be thrown by Thopters. It's just kind of the theme of the... Uh, str it's the theme of the stream, is what I'm doing. It's the going away parties. I've got a deck for each of of those five cards that I've been talking about. I love seeing Ulamog come out faster. Explosive Vegetation will make that happen. Uh, explosive Vegetation will really get your Ulamog out there. Uh, <laughs> Uzalek. Uh, Kozalek, the Great Distortion, and Ulamog, the Ceaseless, the ceaseless Hunger, will now uh, kind of be tag-teaming, which I'm calling Uzalek. <laughs> and when you cat, I'm pretty sure we're going to get Kozalek. I said Kozilek, Kozilek, I'm not sure which it is, but uh, it, uh, yeah, um, things like that, but yep, Kozilek in the house, and uh, Asimov saw play in a block pro tour, blocks are stupid, and 
all kinds of garbage I've seen play in block Pro Tours. It actually means nothing, and it doesn't matter whether or not somebody played some of these cards in Pro Tours. It really is about impact on the format, and there is no format, no format in the history of the game that was impacted uh, by Acid Moss like this duels format has been. And that is the absolute truth. That is undisputable. There is no way you can convince me of otherwise. And trust me, I keep my finger pretty close to the magic pulse. Alrighty, what do we got here? What's our opponent going to bring? What's our opponent going to bring? Well, the game's going to be sinking. Are we frozen? Are they hacking? What's going on? What does it mean when you see a, sink, a game sink before anything gets played, you guys? Are, are we being hacked? That's usually what it means on uh, iOS. Usually means you're dealing with somebody who's unlocking their deck. Uh, and I don't mean in the way of op of uh, getting cards. I mean like they're uh, hacking in such a way that they can pull a card out of their deck and start with it in play. <laughs> Come on, dude. This is the second time in a row we've had a very deliberate player sitting across from us. Must be the Friday night. Bringing out the shenanigans. I don't have time for this shit. All right. <laughs> I could care less about the rank. I have no time for that. <laughs> All right, come on. We're trying to throw a party here. We're trying to have fun. We're trying to show Perilous Mirror he's our boy and say goodbye in a friendly, affectionate manner before he's banished from the game. <sighs> We'll find someone else. Someone else will play against us. They'll play cards in a reasonable amount of time. We'll connect to their game quickly and easily. All these things will happen with the power of positivity. Oh, Duel's Universe, don't you dare be sour. Clap for CGB and feel the power. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Ugh. I don't know if there's any WWE fans in here, all 14 of us. I'm probably the only one. I think it's about one in uh, about one to two hundred people that's an active WWE fan. Mm. So come on, come on, come on. Let's do it. Ah, I can't wait to start playing with some of the new cards. It's going to be amazing. Avacyn is ridiculous. If anybody hasn't seen uh, Avacyn Archangel, holy cow. What a ridiculously broken card. How much fun. It's just going to be a total mess when that gets cast. When, when, when turn 5 comes around, there are two horrible things that can happen to you. Either it'll be a 5-5 haste reality smasher, or they cast nothing and pass the turn, and it's like, uh-oh, I'm about to get Avacyn Archangeled. <laughs> ba bam <laughs> Alright, well... We're not going to mulligan this because we have the man of the hour, Perilous Mirror, who we're saying goodbye to. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty. Um. There's nothing in the deck that costs double blue, so I'm going to conceal the blueness of my deck and just go straight to the mirror. Go straight to the mirror. Then it's then the plan is to go to the aggregate. <sighs> Trying the vile aggregate thopters list. Do send in this particular clown. Get him, Perry! Get him, Perilous Mirror! Get him while you still can before you disappear, taken from us in the darkness by the wizards. <laughs> the wizards that run this place. Living on borrowed time, little friend. Look at this little guy. He looks like just some cute little toy, you know? Like something I saw in Robo Rally once. <laughs> Apparently, you are bad for the format. Um, what did they say? They said Perilous Mirror meant that players 
didn't want to cast big creatures, they just wanted to cast a bunch of small value creatures and just try to trade them in efficient manners. And they said that that wasn't a play pattern that they liked in the game. Well, okay. <laughs> what an odd thing to pick a bone with. Um, do I want to go Abbott? Or do I want to shoot this? I guess we can try to catch those wings. So we can just do this. And this. Like so. And call it a call it a turn. Because we got plenty of good follow-up next turn. Ooh, we get to exile something. I hit a retreat to Kazandu. <laughs> doom doom do do do. Alright, Heliod's Pilgrim. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna put an aura on that thing? You gonna play Gate Creeper Vine. Enjoy it while you can! Soon you'll be casting Sylvan... I think it's Advocate? Sylvan something? 1-1? One, one. Find target basic land? And Gates won't be in the game anymore. They're gonna take our Gates away, but they're gonna give us dual lands that are just like Gates, they're just not called Gates. And therefore, you can't fetch him with a gate creeper. See how it all works together? Well, opponent, what you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? Yeah, I went there. He's gonna swing. That's fine, I'll take it. Oh, he's gonna pass. I'm going to Twin Bolt now, then. I don't want to waste the mana in my turn. I took a damage I didn't have to, but he spent his turn not casting anything of actual use. And now we get to do a bit of that. So we're also getting... Uh, they're taking Elite Vanguard away, and they're getting us Expedition Envoy. Expedition Envoy is exactly the same as Elite Vanguard. 2-1 for 1 white mana. The only difference is that uh, Envoy is an ally, which means now your white ally deck has the tiniest bit more synergy than it had before. You still get three two ones for one white, but now they trigger allied abilities when they come into play. So they're not a completely horrible draw on like turn four or five like they normally are, like a, a one white two one normally is. Now, it's okay because maybe it makes your lantern scout give things lifelink. Maybe it makes things indestructible because of that stupid four three one that I don't play. Who knows? Ah, the positive side of just about everything. So he's got a Death Toucher now. Ugh, don't love that. That makes Vile Aggregate's life hard, but since we're going to get ahead in the grind fest, we don't have to worry too much. We can uh, just go over the top here and start drawing cards and making more Thopters. And Vile Aggregate can stay home because we don't want to trade it off with that Death Toucher. We can do better. Okie dokes, we get to hide the Blighted Gorge. Hallelujah. Things looking great in this game. Uh, plenty of options for next turn. Not a lot our opponent can do without a board wipe, and it definitely looks like they're running a creature feature. Not expecting a board wipe. Yeah, Outland Colossus is big. If he has a way to give it Trample or a Rogue's Passage, it could be a pain. But I think there's a good chance we can just finish the game before we have to worry too much. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So the best ways to add damage to this turn are Chief of the Foundry and Thopter Engineer. So let's see if we can flip one over with uh, Abbott here. Something glowing. Ah, oh, Foundry. I'll take it. Hard to complain about a free Foundry of the Consuls. We're up to 5-5 five, five with our aggregate. We have an activation with Pia Kirin. We can do 1, 2, 3, 4. We can kill the Death Toucher, but then our aggregate will not be big enough to go through the Colossus. 
do we keep committing more Thopters right now? Or do we keep mana up and fire off with Pia Kirin? I think that uh, firing off with Pia Kirin will end the game faster. So we'll get in with our flying threats and we'll start flinging artifacts at the face. Unless we draw something that changes the plan. I think spending 3 mana right now for another 1-1 one, one isn't as good as spending 3 mana to deal 2 damage to his face. Oh, hello there. It's a 1 of in the deck. It's a pretty good hit. The problem is, I don't really want to exile my aggregate. So, if he uh, gives this trample or unblockable, then we'll go ahead and spike the network, but for now we're just going to pass. Stick to the plan. Let's see, you got a Nissa. Bang. Bang. Let's see if he has wild size or something like that. If he does, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shed many tears. I guess he's just pausing because he wants to try to play land, but he can't. Cracker Factory. What you got? You are under pressure. Do 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 bum bum Pressure crashing down on me crashing down on you no matter for Alright stop collaborate and listen Iceman's back got a brand new invention something grab a hold of me tightly flow like a hawk through daily and nightly will it ever stop yo I don't know. Turn off the lights and I glow to the extreme. Rock a mic like a vandal. Light up the t stage, burn trump like a candle. Dance. Come with the speak of that boom's killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom. Deadly. When I play a dope melody, anything less than the best is a felony. Love it or leave it. You better make way. Ah. <laughs> All right. So opponent's dead. Hallelujah. We're just gonna fly over the top and pick him to death, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up, oh, yeah. We'll just turn it all sideways like so. See how he wants to block here. Please don't block the Abbot. I would have a really good time if you refused to block the Abbot. Okay, makes sense. So if he's going to do that, he should block the Abbot with Gate Creeper. Oh, he doesn't. Fear the Pia Kieran. All right, so bees it. Alrighty, that'll do it. Boom! You go down. Ah. Just when you thought that Abbott uh, couldn't get many prowess triggers and thopters. Alright, guys. So, what are we gonna do? Now that we have to cut some of these cards, some of these cards that are going to be banished. Jagged Scar Archers, you have been good, but you are going away now. And um, all of this is legit. None of this has to change. So let's see. 
I think uh, it's a pretty easy swap for Jagged Scar. I think it's just uh, get the Reclamation Sages in there and hope to catch some artifacts and enchantments. It seems like there's enough of them to go around nowadays that you can usually catch something. I mean, obviously the power level of Jagged Scar, you know, it's not going to be a straight smash your face, but if you get lucky enough to catch something, kill an artifact or enchantment, it's a pretty big tempo play. So that's, that's I guess, where the easiest cut for elves is. Now, getting into red. Oh, man. Foundry Street Denizen. Foundry Street Denizen. You, sir, were too good. And you gotta go. So, uh, Goblin Balloon Brigade. I don't think that card's gonna do any good. I think we've kinda gotta stick with a Lava Step Raider, if anything. I mean, we've only got seven one-drops now, which I don't know if that makes call of the moon even call the full moon even that good it's probably better to run like mckinney slide runner than to run another one drop if you don't have an, a good one drop to run you know what i mean now i'm sure we're going to get some better red cards um i'm sure we're going to get some better red cards but i guess uh for now we'll just fill the shoes with the lava step piece of junk and call that a day Nah, uh, this Jun deck's gonna get gutted a little bit. Gonna get a little bit gutted. No more, no more Perilous Mirror. No more Gate Creeper Vine. No more gates. So, let's see here. Uh, bah, 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 24 land, sure. I guess we can go back to some of these value dorks right here. Get them in there. Um, Perilous Mirror is hard to replace, though, because you could use it as a removal spell. Uh, and that was really helpful. So, let's see. It's interesting to try, like, Rot Shambler. I'm going to... I think I might just get one of those in there. It is something I've been meaning to kind of revisit in a sacrifice deck, which this pretty much is. I do think I'm going to need more early removal, though. Perilous Mirror, you know, you could combo with, with Bone Splinters, and you didn't have to worry too much about early removal. Perilous Mirror could do the job. It could kill the Jace, it could kill the Nyssa, get them off the table. Without that, um, kind of gotta fill the shoes. Uh, Ember Hauler doesn't really do it. Double Red is not something I'm interested in. Maybe some Goblin's Arsonist. Um, that does kind of combine with, you know, it, it does the Evil Leap thing, but one damage and two damage are a big difference. Hmm. <laughs> Let's look around. Let's look around. I'm not running Rune Servitor for the double draw. I think that's a. I think that's a pretty foolish thing. Ah, here's a... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a card I don't think many people will agree with me on. And that's okay, but Infernal Scarring. Interesting card in these value decks. Giving uh, your little dork, like, uh, Visionary, Blister Pot, or Thrall, plus two, plus O, oh, is actually uh, puts the opponent in a tough conundrum, because they didn't really want to target it, and they didn't really want to worry about it, but then they have to, and if they do something about it, you draw a card and you get a death benefit. So, it's a card I've been meaning to test and things like this. The only problem, it doesn't work with Flame Shadow Conjuring. It doesn't, you know, it's okay with Evolutionary Leap, but it's pretty bad with the Conjuring. Unless, of course, you have a sack outlet and you can enchant the hasted creature to get in an extra two points out of nowhere. Meh. I don't know. I don't know. It is something I've been meaning to try. So let's go on to three. And I'm not doing dragon fodder because dragon fodder makes tokens. I don't need more tokens. I need more utility creatures. Um, like, you can't copy Dragon Fodder with Flame Shadow Conjuring. You can't sacrifice it on its own like you can with a Scion. You can't, uh, sacrificing it doesn't trigger Liliana. And you can Evo Leap with your Fodder Tokens, but you can't Evo Leap two more Fodder Tokens. So, nope, not doing Dragon Fodder. Denied. Don't think it's good. Alright, so we'll try it that way. Oh, let's bust into the ramp. 
Extra husk pumps aren't as good in the Jund version as they are, like, it makes it, like, uh, Dragon Fodder is admittedly more explosive with the husk, but pumping it isn't, like, the whole point in the Jund version. It, Jund is a lot grindier. So, acid frickin' moss. Gone. Over. It's, it's a new day. Wow. So, obviously we need to ramp a little harder. We need to keep the lands flowing, and we definitely still want to get to, you know, six mana, seven mana. So, kind of an easy thing to do would be bring in Natural Connection. I don't like Eyeless Watcher. I don't care what people say about it. Um, it's not the same thing. It can be interacted with. It makes board wipes against you suddenly a lot more effective than they used to be. So, I think what I'm going to test to start with is we'll get to the three Natural Connections, all right? And we'll get a fourth uh, incarnate to kind of shore up the four, or not a fourth, but a third incarnate to shore up that four spot. And um, yeah, it's a much lower curve on a ramp deck, but I think we'll still be able to get to the top rope just fine. And this will be kind of the fair version of ramp until the rest of the rotation happens. And we get those, um, once we get uh, explosive vegetation to replace it, Obviously, that'll make the cut, along with a lot of the other cards coming in. And that will already be in my test version, in my paper version of the deck, will be Explosive Vegetation. And over here, uh, we got the Myers coming out. Perilous Mirrors, Audi. And uh, is it Gilgate? Audi. And for that, we'll just put the Wilds down. And let's see, Perilous Mirror, two drop. So there's, you know, there's other options for two drops in the deck. I don't really love them. Like Alchemist Vial isn't something I really want to, wa want to run. But we could go over to blue. I mean, we're down to five blue cards. We could really use some balance there. And uh, one blue card that we can run is Jace. And you can argue about whether or not Jace belongs in a Thopter deck, but I mean, every time that I've flashed back Exquisite Firecraft with it, I've felt pretty good about his presence. And sometimes you just need to loot out the, um... Sometimes you just gotta loot out the Mana Flood, which is a pretty regular thing with Thopters, you know what I mean? So, there we go. Um... Oh yeah, we've gotta go back and uh, replace Gate Creepers from our ramp deck. I'll do that in a second. Um, I think I want to try the Tide Hollow Drifter. In a world where the Thopters are, you know, there's plenty of Thopters bouncing off each other, the Drifter can make your Thopters better than their Thopters. But I don't really like the card. It's, I don't know. It's definitely no Perilous Mirror, right? I mean, it would be great to have extra reach, more burn, something like that. Uh, this is definitely also not a deck for uh, Dragon Fodder. It just doesn't do the same thing. Now, two drops, one, two, three... Four, five, six is pretty reliable, but I don't know. I don't know. We definitely are crowded at the three spot. Um, reasonably crowded in the four spot, you know? We don't want another three drop, and we don't another, want another four drop. Uh, I don't want another five drop, because that spot is taken up by the threes and the fours that we didn't get to cast. So I want a one drop or a two drop, you know, for sure. For absolute sure. Um... And it's kind of between, like, Telling Time and Tide Hollow Drifter. If we're going to run Jace, maybe Telling Time is the right call. Because with Telling Time, you can at least try to filter out and max out your turn three, be a Vile Aggregate or a Thopter Engineer, and then your turn four to be a Whirler Rogue or a Pia Kirin. And Telling Time can, you know, try to set you up for that. Your second turn is often not that important in this deck anyway. Not nearly as important as an Engineer or an Aggregate and a... Uh, you know, a make Thopters guy on turn four. That's really what the deck is all about. So we'll save that there. We'll stick with that for now. Um, it's all being tested. It doesn't mean I'm right. And let's get in here. And let's replace those gate creepers. Going to be sad to see them go, but yeah, I guess for now we submit to the visionary and hope to draw our lands. And actually, without the gate creepers, I'm going to go up to... A 24th land at least, and I think I'm going to replace a natural connection. Uh, also, the lack of gate creepers actually means we have to increase our red sources again. So we'll do it like this. Because the gate creepers were a pretty uh, clutch source of red.
Since Visionary is mostly going to be there trying to draw land, we're going to... Let's see. Yeah, we're going to find... We're going to get all the way up now. And that should make sure that we get our red mana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And 25 lands should make sure that we hit the land drops. To get there... Yeah, I think it's something like that for now. So yeah, not looking back, looking forward. We're going to take out those uh, amazing OP cards that are going to get the ban hammer anyway, and we're going to practice with some other cards in their wake so that we're not missing them the day that, the, that they rotate, and uh, that's going to be the plan. And also on paper, I'm going to start practicing with some of the spoiled cards for the next set. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out tonight for the going away party for our friends Perilous Mirror. Acid Moss, Gate Creeper Vine, Foundry Street Denizen, Jagged Scar Archers. They may or may not be missed, but in the meantime, looking forward, looking forward to Oath and Shadows. And you guys have a great weekend. I'm out. Good night.